Kingdom authority, hey, Jesus who died is now glorified. King of all kings, Amano no moko supramanda para die. Good evening, guys. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening, Paul. Paul the Apostle. Good evening, how are you? How are you guys doing? I hope you've had a fantastic week. I hope God has been good to you. I, I am sure. I, I, I trust in the, um, the kindness and the faithfulness of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit that He has been, He has been good to you. Um, it's another amazing opportunity to come into into you guys, um, to come into your day, your time, your timeline, bringing you good tidings, bringing you the Word of the Lord, um, which we all depend on for inspiration, for revival, to make us alive. And to give us the inheritance that we came to inherit when we accepted the Son of God as our King, Jesus, is His name. Um, I want to thank God for how far He has helped us on this journey um, following Jesus. On this journey as we progress in this um, series. God has been good to us. Um, so tonight we're going to attempt to press forward to make progress on this pathway of spiritual development. Um, on Sunday we began to speak, we began to speak about the growth process and I, I began to explain to you how that most of the things that people put premium on thinking these things give them points in the spirit they only account for little of what is expected okay there are more pressing more important more weighty stuff in the spirit everything is not the same and of course there is a sequence to which god must be known there is a progression in which you must know god if you know god haphazardly um you will find it more to be more dangerous than beneficial okay so there is a pathway of spiritual progress there is a way there's a progression to advance in the pursuit of god in the apprehension of your spiritual identity as you derive it from christ okay so tonight we would press a little bit forward understanding the progress the, the growth process and so the case study that we're going to look at tonight is actually our pattern man jesus okay because he is he, he was the first person to please god with this life lived in the flesh and god gave a testimony okay the testimony didn't come through a prophet testimony didn't come through an apostle testimony came from god himself okay his voice thundered from eternity huh? resounded in time giving his approval of the stature of Jesus okay as a beloved son the one that pleases his heart meaning the one that lives up to all of his expectation yeah leaves nothing undone and I hope this becomes the chief of your desire and of your pursuit in life to receive such testimony from God how that you please him and how that you are an example of what God calls satisfaction what god calls to be satisfied 
Okay, so we're going to take a case study looking at Jesus tonight, but let me give you a little bit um, from my notes. Um, and then we're going to look at Luke chapter number two. We're going to look at Luke chapter number one, chapter number two, just a couple of verses. And then you'll be blessed. But let me just tell you before we go into scriptures tonight, I perceive a season breaking upon us. I perceive a season breaking upon us. Um, and look, you can take this fire from wherever you are in the world. That's the beautiful thing. It is available. The fire has been kindled. If you have fresh, dry wood, you will catch fire. If you bring your wood close enough to this furnace, you will get lit. Do you understand this? You will get lit with flame, the flame of the Holy Spirit. The passion of Christ will 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 capture your heart okay the passion to see nations saved and people come to Christ in their hundreds of millions and thousands and, and I, I am persuaded that if you're listening to me tonight or whatever time you're replaying this broadcast I believe without a shadow of a doubt that God has prepared you for this move Okay, he has kept you for a time as this. And I would hope that you wouldn't take it for granted. I hope that you will become intentional in this season and really tune your heart to the frequency of the Spirit to hear what God is saying and to hear the role that you have been assigned in the progressive implementation of God's plan as it finds expression in our generation. It's a time of revival. Yeah, it's a time of revival. And listen to me, I know you've heard it again and again. Oh, revival. This one is different. You would see. In the coming days, weeks, and months, you would see. You would see that the climate has changed in the spirit. And it will begin to have ripple effect upon the landscape. You would see. And once again, Jesus will become famous in a generation. I know for many years, Jesus has become an exclamation in the mouth of people. Now, it is what they say when they just get scared. Oh, Jesus. Okay? Not anymore. We have come into a season. Woo! Come on, Sila, Prandos, Paladai. A season is upon us where Jesus will once again be famous and the world will recognize one more time the fame of our God, the reason for his fame. For the Bible says, as the fire causes the wood to burn and the water to boil, so Lord, let your approach terrorize and terrify the nation and at long last they would understand the reason for your fame. At long last, the world will understand the reason for the fame of our God. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. So it's a season of revival that is upon us. This revival will break out from London City. In Europe. Huh? We are the point men for Europe. We are among the point men for Europe. And this revival will break out from London City. And it will take off like a wildfire. And it will begin to spread out all through all the cities in England. From Birmingham to Coventry to Northampton to Nottingham to Hall City, Swansea, Leicester City, um, 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 Everton, Maproscopa, Ica, Manchester, Bremos to Liverpool. On the way to Belfast, to Ireland, to Northern Ireland, Capo Prasco, Felamai, Locoski, to Scotland, to Wales, Icopo Pale. Jesus will be glorified and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord it will happen revivals will sweep through your universities it will sweep through and all of you that have been praying for revival rejoice the time you have been waiting for has come it is on the brink now it is on the brink the question is would you take it you know the sad thing is some people will pray for revival and when the revival is on the horizon then they, that's when they would say oh yeah man I, I just want to I, I found a new passion I found a new passion I, I, I found a new passion may that not be you may you not be the one that quit at the 11th hour just the time before the daybreak you say it's too dark it's not, it's not I don't think the day is going to break I don't think the day is going to break you know, the darkest hour is just moments before the breaking of a new day. The darkest hour of the night are just moments before the breaking of a new day. 
And when that switch happens, the day is not just completely bright. The darkness begins to fade away. And the light begins to replace. And it's a gradual thing. And if you just hang in there long enough, you would see. And it doesn't matter if you believe in it. Do you realize that the breaking of day has nothing to do with your faith? Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? And the day has no respect for if you believe that the day would break tomorrow morning. Look, you don't have to believe. You will just see. Do you understand this? You will see. It doesn't need your prayer. doesn't need your supplication. doesn't need your intercession. That the day will break. It is above your pay grade. It will break. So also is the move of God. When God is set to move, it will happen with or without you. Do you understand this? So then you will, by your own fervency and your own preparation, you will position yourself and decide what part you will play in the revival. But come, the revival must. Must come, the revival. The revival must come. And I, I, I announce to you, the time that, that is upon us is not a time when you will be wishing for revival. No, it is a time when revival will happen with or without you. But I pray that it will not happen without you. I pray that you will not be caught on the other side of it. That you will be at the cutting edge of what God is doing in your time. Because this is the only meaningful reason to be alive at a time like this. It is that you will be instrumental in what God is doing. And I pray that that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. So if there is a time to pray, it is now. If there is a time to get in the word of God, it is now. If there is a time to believe God like crazy, just have like mad crazy faith, it is now. If there is a time to walk by faith and not by sight, there is no better time than now. If there is a time to trust God with all your heart and chase after him with all your strength, with all of your soul, with all of your heart, that time is now. If there is a time to fast, it is now. If there is a time to pray long in the spirit and tarry with for new wine, it is now. It is now. It is now. I feel it. I feel like a spring bubbling right in my bosom, inside my belly. And he that believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living. The Bible says, this well wells up to eternity. Come on, man, protos keeper. Jesus said to the woman at the well, he said, the water that I have to give, if I give you this water and you have a drink of this water, you will never thirst again. You will never have to fetch again because what installment is enough? This water will bubble. Come on, Moses. It will spring up and well up to eternity. Come on, bravos, come on. It is like the song that says, we just won't look. Everything changes. Amen. Yeah, with just one fetching of this water, Mamos Kapai, your life will change. And you will affect the generation. May this be your reality in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Amen. So, let's press a little bit further tonight. I, I, I perceive tonight is going to be very, very short, sharp, precise. As God gives us ascendancy. So, I have explained to you that to be spiritual children is to be dull spiritually dual and to not have skill in listening okay and to be spiritually dull is not a bad thing if you are at entry level children age but when you have been a child for too long then it becomes a problem okay being spiritually dull for too long and being hard of hearing for too long becomes a problem and the problem is, it is not just a problem for you. Because you may just think, well, it's my spiritual life. You know when you say things like that, it is the most selfish statements to make. Mm. It is not your life. You were outsourced huh? a fraction of the life of Christ. Do you understand this? You are a branch of a lampstand. So it is not just, well, I'm just my own lamp. No, no. You make up part of a lamp. Without you, the lamp is not meant to be complete. So the moment you accept Jesus, you lose your life and you gain a new one. This new one is not yours. Huh? That's what Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter number 2 from verse number 20. He says, however, the life that I live, it is no longer I who live. Hmm? For it is Christ who lives 
in me, through me. It is no longer your life. God just shared. It is a principle of shared dominion. The law of shared dominion. God shared his dominion with you. So you can't just yank it and run away. No. No. So before you say, oh, it is just my spiritual life. No. See, there are so many people that are that are predestined to rise on the strength of the fire that will burn on your altar. Mm. So if you operate that altar at your will, as you feel, you, you, are, you, are, you are an irresponsible member of God's kingdom. Tendency, I can guarantee you, resources will be rationed when it comes to you. God will be meticulous about how he distributes. And I began to announce to you when I began to prophesy the reality and the texture of time moving forward from 2022 i told you it is going to be the time of kingdom emphasis where resources from eternity will be allocated based on trustworthiness do you want to understand this men will be weighed on the scales and resources of heaven will be allocated based on competence of men sacrifice of men and how well people understand the kingdom agenda will determine how much of kingdom resources will be pushed in your direction to help furnish the assignment that has been called out for you in the grand scale of what God is doing. So if you are that kind of functionary, Christian, believer, that operates your life as you feel, at your pace, how convenient it is. You pray when you like, when it feels convenient. You read the word when you like. You fast when you like. You obey God when you like. And you operate the intensity of your, of your perfecting obedience and righteousness. How you feel, you would lack resources in time that you're coming in. Uh, so all the resources that have been lavishly distributed before now God is very meticulous he is only he is, when you read the scripture that from um, to, um, to whom uh, the one who produces more uh, more will be given and the one who does not produce well who does not produce well the little he has will be taken away from him and given to the one who is producing well now is the time when you begin to find that scripture fulfilled mm. yeah God will take from those who have little and he will add it to those who are productive with many. And you will say, oh, but at least God should leave you with them. You know, let them just, no, no. Have you seen the rate at which evil is gaining ground in the world? Have you seen the rate at which the devil is violently and, and aggressively pushing his agenda in the world? So if you want to be one of the ones who, who, one of the ones who tells us Christians, they just calm down, it's not that deep, it's far. I don't want to say God will punish you, huh? But you will have God to contend with. You will have God to... If you're one of the ones that are telling those who are on fire, fathering for God, you want to tell them, calm down, it's not a deal, let's just take it easy, it's okay, you know. Don't, don't push people too hard. You know, you don't, let, let, let people know God at their pace. Really? Really? Is the devil allowing you to know evil at your own pace? Mm. Look at the world that you're living in. Just look around you. Does it look like the devil is allowing you to be baptized in darkness at your own pace? No. It takes you against your will. Your, your, con your consent is unsolicited for. We, they don't care about your consent. The violence with which darkness is progressing in the earth. Have you not heard that from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is pre preached? And every man presses into it. And another prophet paraphrasing of that scripture says, from the time, my improbable syllabus of John, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing and the violent people have been forcefully resisting it too. So the, the powers resisting the expression of the kingdom of God are violent in nature. And hostile in action. So it means if, we, if the kingdom of God must progress in the earth and find progressive implementation, it will be on the back of the stamina and strength of men who are violently pushing back. The boundaries of darkness. So the time for calm, cool, and collected Christianity is over. Now, I can, I'm can i telling you, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're a calm, collected, cool Christian, you will be casualty of war. I'm telling you, straight bullets will hit you. You will be in no man's land. You will be caught in crossfire. God is firing, the devil is firing. You're just going to be in the middle. Hebrews chapter number 5 verse 14, you don't need to open it, open it, read it in your own time. But Hebrews chapter number 5 verse 14, make a note of it. Solid food are for the spiritually mature. And I told you, 
spiritually matured here, another world wants. Okay, what matures people is training. Rule of thumb, write that down. Never forget it. All of us were born children. All of us were born with potential. All of us were born and given the same head start. I don't care if you were born into a rich family or a poor family. Or the gospel of the cross gives everybody equal starting point. Do you understand this? In a wealthy house, there are many vessels. Every vessel huh, started on the same level. In every vessel, depending on how they live their life, will determine how they will end. What kind of vessel they will be. They will choose. They will choose. So the difference between, because we're speaking about the growth process, isn't it? and the, the process is the metamorphosis. Okay, it is what it is the it is the measure uh, of the change of state uh, from desire to the actual manifestation of the expectation. Okay, so everybody was born predestined with greatness, predestined to conform to the image of Christ. So at the time you were born again, you were predestined to conform to the image of Christ. You were born with still predestination. You still don't look like the image of Christ yet. What you do with your spiritual life, what you do with your Christian life, is what will determine if you would end up looking like the image of Christ or if you would look like a tampered image. You would look like so many things in this world. Things that you have conformed to, you take on their, you, you, you take on their image. If I call 10 people and I, and I give them pencils and I tell them to draw a line, you will see some people with bold lines, like zoo. And you will see someone whose hand was shaky. You can tell that this one, whoever drew this line, even if you were not there when the lines were drawn, when I show you the result of 10 people who drew lines, you can tell. You can tell what happened when the line was being drawn. You can see straight lines you can see solid lines you can see you would see broken lines you will see some solid faint solid uh, mm -hmm. i'm telling you these things betray you you can tell the one that was drawn with absolute confidence regardless of if you consider it to be accurately straight or not you can tell whoever drew it at least drew confidence then you will see shaky ones you will see dotted ones you will see wonky ones you will see you will see the lack of decisiveness in it so also, the outcome of your life, the texture of your life, will be determined by how seriously you take your spiritual growth. The same process is dealt to everyone. But how would you respond to it? And whatever comes out of your vessel uh, will determine where God will place you in the house. So if you end up becoming a dustbin, uh, there is use for you in the house. If you end up becoming a golden flower vase, there is a place for you in the house as well. If you end up becoming a doormat, there is, there is a role for everything in the house. God doesn't just condemn some people to doormat and then put some people at flower vase. No, 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 no. no. Everybody gets a, the same head start. You decide what God will use you for in his house. You decide. By your attention uh, to the details of the expectation of growth for your life. So the difference between baby Christians, novice, incompetent, dull, no stamina, where we all start from, and those who become matured uh, is training. Just write that down. Never forget it ever in your life. It is training. Okay? The Bible says solid food are for the mature, those who through the means of exercise and use, no, through the means of exercise, have their senses, through the means of use, sorry, have their senses exercised. Those who through the means of use, mean training, practice, have their senses exercised. Those who through the means of use, have their senses exercised. Have you ever seen the wrist of those people who play the grand piano? And their hands just flow like water, like... Brrr. Like, and you think, yeah, she has just a wrist like you. 
but because of use and exercise, use and exercise, use, then those, those fingers are trained to move like a wave. Huh? Move like a wave. But if we put you on that same keyboard, you, your, your hands are too stiff. Your hands are too stiff. You can't, you can't run some notes because of how stiff your hands are. And so also, when it comes to displaying competence with spirituality, there are certain things you can't attend to. There are certain demons that you can't, you can't confront. That was what happened when they brought that guy who is demon-possessed and the demon always threw him in the fire and, and the parent brought that child to the disciples and they could not cast out the devil. And when Jesus returned, the man went to Jesus and the disciples felt embarrassed. Oh my God. The guy, he said, look, I brought my son to your disciples and they could not help us. And Jesus was disappointed. Did you hear Jesus' statement there? He says, oh my God, you faithless generation. How long must I put up with you? Bring the child to me. He was upset. Jesus was upset. I, I, I know you think because he still eats with you and still follows you, you think he's impressed with you. He's not. He's bearing with you. So the fact that you're operating your spiritual life, how you like, how you feel, and, and no hand is slapping you in this, you, you, you think everything is just fine. Well, Jesus understands. God, God knows. I'm just a bit under the weather today. No, no God is. You ought to know that these things don't impress God. And, and so now, someone just walked past you depressed, and you're thinking, well, look, all of us are depressed. So mm. look. I'm battling with my own. Oh, you are an embarrassment. You are supposed to be the oil of joy. Oh, the Bible says, for the Lord, speaking about Jesus, for the Lord, your God has anointed you with the oil of joy more than all of your brethren. Why? Because of his compliance. He has oil to give. He is the river that makes the city glad. Oh, there is a river Ooh, that makes glad the city of God. The Lord is in our midst. You are supposed to be a river out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water so that when you come across people who are dead in faith, dead in expectation, they are, they are tired, oppressed, they are hopeless, they are, they are depressed when, they, when, they, when your flow, when your flow touches them. Oh, Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, it says, and the river flowed from, the, from underneath the door of the temple and anything it comes across receives life on impact. Your generation is supposed to receive life on impact. Everything that touches you is supposed to receive revival, life, come back to life. Yes, sir. But you are still dealing with depression because you have refused to exercise your spiritual man. Huh? You have stayed a child. You have refused to through use have your spiritual senses exercised so that you can perceive in the spirit the reason for this depression and break it quickly. You're feeling depressed. You're just feeling heavy, feeling sad. You can up and the Lord says, ah, 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 look, look, look at where the arrow is firing from. And quickly you retaliate. Oh my God. Listen to me. I don't let any attack on me go unanswered. Oh, the Holy Spirit trained me well. I don't just say, oh, I woke up, I woke up. I didn't die in my sleep. No, I said, Lord, take me back. Take me back. We, this, this is not done. This is not finished until I wave the victory flag. I'll, I'll take it fast. No, you can't take a swipe at me in the spirit and go scuffling. In the physical, you can. I'll allow it. You can insult me and, and, and go. It's okay. It's fine. I'll say the Lord bless you. I'll, after all, Jesus said, if they slap us on the left cheek, we should turn the right cheek. I'll do that in the physical, not in the spirit. Uh, that statement Jesus made is not for the spiritual frame of reference. It's for physical. Because our weapons of our warfare, they are not, they are not canal. Do you see this? They are mighty through God. So someone is intimidating you in the physical, allow them to win. Uh, when you return back to your prayer altar, we will deal with it. Then we will know who is who. Do you understand this? When I get on my altar, e kapos kopato, and light up my lamp, okopos, kapayanda, pramas, kepe, imbrodo, okopos, see this. Uh, that arrow of depression will not, will not, it will not be left unanswered. It will be answered for. Yeah. That you have, you have the boldness and the nerve to shoot depression and confusion at me. I would respond. Yeah, I would respond. No, 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 no. So that the next time you want to shoot it, you think twice. You say, ah, let's find someone else. Let's find someone else. Yeah, you pick fights with me carefully in the spirit. You ought to become like that. But because you're so, you're just, you're just an easy swipe. Easy swipe. 
Do you understand this? Even little little demons that have no rank can just can just have a go at you mm. because you have refused to grow, to grow. That's why you're always oppressed. You're always depressed. You're one week sharp, two weeks off, and then one weeks, and then we have to wind you like a machine now. Wind you, 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 and then and then and then you're like, oh, rah, 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 rah. praise God, holy, hallelujah, oh my God, Holy Spirit, and then five days. On the sixth day, he's gone again. She's gone. Mm -hmm. It ought not to be so. Yes, you would remain a child until you have your senses exercised in the spirit. The A to Z of God's word, the knowledge of Jesus the King, is taught by the teacher, the Holy Ghost. All there is to know about Jesus can only be taught by the competent skills of the Holy Ghost. But, in the beginning when you're a spiritual child, uh, this is the role of leadership now, when you're a spiritual child, the responsibility of baby, spiritual babies, spiritual children of God, the responsibility of feeding them the spiritual milk, which is the basic understanding of Christ and his kingdom, is given as a responsibility to approved, matured believers who then can be ordained ministers, pastors, apostles, prophets, or people who have just paid the price to be taught by the Spirit. Do you understand this? In different capacities. The reason is because just as a baby cannot feed the baby. Have you ever seen a six-month-old baby feeding another six-month-old baby? <laughs> don't do physically in an everyday life they do with their spirit that is the that is the level of that is the highest level of irresponsibility and madness that i've seen in this generation mm -hmm. things that people won't even do with their money or their school or, or, or their everyday life they they don't have a problem doing it with god and with the things of god you will never see a three months old baby huh? imagine you have twins are you going to tell one of them say you feed your brother and they are both four months old. No. They don't, they, they can't. So also, I make both, you may never have heard this before, but I'm saying it, and because, listen to me, I'm an apostle by calling. So I have the authority to establish doctrine. Yeah. And this is one of such. Write it down. This is doctrine. This is not up for debate. Do you understand this? I don't understand. I don't care who you are. This one is not up for debate. This one came from the mouth of Jesus himself. Teaching me. And this is it. A young believer cannot feed another young believer. There is a problem. There's going to be a problem. It's impossible. A young believer cannot, at best, it is iron sharpens iron. And you will sharpen on the level of your sharpness. So, so it's not, don't quote scripture of all, but the Bible says iron sharpens iron. No, you don't have skill with the, with the Bible. So you don't even know what that scripture means. So just put it down. Huh? Before you raise it as a, as a fist and, and, and shake it, put it down. A young believer cannot feed another young believer. It is going to be disaster. It's as simple as that. Adults must see to the duty of feeding the infants. So also, the spiritually matured are the ones that are only qualified to see to the duty of feeding Christian children of God, children in faith. Only the spiritually matured, those who through training and use have their senses exercised, these are the only ones that have the authorization by the Spirit of Christ to feed people with spiritual milk. Mm -hmm. Meaning to teach the word of God. So, it is wrong. It is important. It is, it is not. It doesn't make any sense for a young believer to say, I want to go preach the gospel. You, you don't have the competence to. I'm sorry. No matter how noble it sounds, no matter how good it sounds, that oh, everybody just trying to win souls. I'm telling you, you will send more souls to hell than you will bring to the kingdom. Why? Because of your incompetence. Just like you can't start medical school today and say, I just want to go operate on people. I want to go do surgery. You will kill people. You don't have the skill. You don't know how to. You don't have the experience. You get into the middle of operating someone, you will see blood and you will freak out and the person will die. 
or you cut the wrong thing. You're supposed to cut five centimeters uh, into the liver, and then you mistakenly cut seven and kill the person. You will leave the person worse than you found them. So is the reality of an incompetent person with the word trying to feed someone else with the word. You will miss, you're gonna be giving them concoction. Huh? Do you know what concussion is? Yeah, that's what you're giving people when you're trying to preach. I know you mean well. Oh, but I just want to win souls. Go and get trained first. Mm -hmm. You go under authority of a superior person and learn of the Holy Ghost and mature your senses and, le and study to show yourself approved. Being able to rightfully divide the word of truth. Then you will be approved. You will receive God's approval then you will be able to rightfully explain the word of God. Feed people. Even, even though Jesus had asked, asked Peter a question, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, tend my flock. Do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep. Even though Jesus had given Peter charge, having trained them with three and a half years, he told them, he said, don't go and start pitching preaching. Don't go start preaching. Don't do anything until you receive power. After the Holy Spirit comes. So you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You, you, are, you are a novice in, in dealing with the Holy Spirit. And then you want to go do spiritual things. By what spirit? That's the question I want to ask you. you. You are a novice in dealing with the Holy Spirit. You are just about going about your own, you know your own daily routine that is comfortable for you. Huh? The way you feel, you hear God. And on the strength of that, you, you want to go, you put the people's life at risk. Mm -hmm. Because you want to be listened to. Nobody wants to talk and say, I just want to talk. I don't want anyone to listen to me. I just want to talk. No. If you, if you want to preach, you want people to hear what you're saying. So you will sound compelling. And people do all manner of gimmicks on the internet and they'll say, don't scroll, don't scroll, don't scroll. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Yes. Don't move, don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't. <laughs> You do all manner of things to get attention, yeah? and I see 50,000 likes, 100,000 likes, 250,000 likes. Yeah, those are 250,000 misled people. Whatever nonsense you spilled out of your mouth, those are 250,000, and whatever mistakes they go to make on the strength of what you told them, huh? those are blood on your hands. Mm, that's true. So that's why Jesus said, don't be in a hurry to be a teacher. It is not just for anybody. There is a training, an accreditation, an approval that is requisite before you can take on that assignment. No one takes that honor upon himself. This is the need to grow. And for you, Paul, going to Bible school does not put you there. You will still be frustrated. You will still be oppressed. You will still be down. Oh, when you go to Bible school, you go to learn letters. You don't know the spirit yet. Until you know the spirit of that letter, you can't communicate it. In fact, forget about communication. Even the word is not useful to you yourself first. You, because you're still feeling down. You're still feeling depressed. You're still feeling somehow. You're still feeling defeated. Huh? Meanwhile, you have gone to Bible school and you have learned the word of life. You're supposed to have learned the word of life. You're supposed to have learned the word of truth. You're supposed to have learned the word that revives, that brings revival. How come you... I don't experience revival. How come you don't feel alive? How come you don't feel inspired? It is because the Bible says the letter kill it. It is the spirit that gives life. Do you understand this? In the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. So if you go learn the word, learn Bible, go to Bible school, and those words don't convert to life, something is missing. Uh, and what is missing is the spirit of life. It is that spirit, when it collides with the word, the word comes alive. Until then, you just have text. And the letter kill it. You know why? Because on the strength of the letter, you're going to go face an enemy and you, 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 you will be a casualty of war. <laughs> Do you understand this? You attempt to fight a demon because of a scripture you learned in Bible school and the demon will kill you. Because demons don't have respect for the fact that you're quoting the word. Eh? Just like if you take a bullet in your hand and you, a terrorist is coming to kill you and then you hold a bullet in your hand and you start throwing it like stones. You can't do much damage. Do you understand this? Because the, demon, the bullet was not designed to have maximum assault effect by being thrown with the hand. No, you put it inside a gun and then you shoot it out. So you see, maybe you, you threw five bullets at the terrorist and it's just... 
shaking them off. Huh? And then the sixth one, you put it inside the gun. God helped the terrorists that he would, he would disrespect the sixth bullet like he disrespect, disrespected the first five. Then he will quickly meet his ancestors. Because this next one that you're going to shoot will kill him. So also, if you just know the word, and you can just quote the word and talk scriptures and say John chapter number 2 verse and that's all you know. You, the devil will embarrass you. Yeah. Demons will embarrass you. They will disregard you. They will disrespect you. And then you're going to be confused and say, well, I'm speaking the Bible. But I'm, but I'm speaking the word of God. No. That is not what makes it powerful. It is that you are shooting it by the force of the spirit. Do you understand this? That, that is what, see, the storm cannot kill Goliath. It is that he was thrown with the force. David picked the stone. He puts it in the sling. He was shaking it and shaking it and shaking it and then he released it. Boom! And then he brought down Goliath. So also, you're tossing the word of God. You're tossing it at minimum speed. It has, it doesn't, the, it, it's like a knife. If you put a knife, if this is a knife and I put it and I just, and I put it on the table, the, the knife is harmless. But the moment I hold the knife like this, it becomes a weapon, isn't it? It becomes a weapon. It's not harmful. But the moment I raise it and I point it towards someone, it becomes a weapon ready to take life. So also, if you just have the word of God lying around in your head, in your memory, it's not harmful to the two demons. So demons are not scared. But when the spirit, when, when you load that word, into the barrel of your spirit. Oh my God. And then you wind the spirit. You wind the spirit. Wind the spirit. Wind the spirit. When you release a word from that place. Ooh. Then you will know that Jesus is not a liar. And you will know that God is not. God is not just a myth. It is real guys. It works. And demons bow to the name of Jesus. They bow to the word of God. So what transitions you from this inexperienced novice user of the word of God to an experienced user of the word of God that can bring in harvest and bring in maximum impact, training, maturity. Do you understand this? Maturity, training, growth, exercise, use, exercise, use. And you must be taught these things. See these things that I'm saying to you, a baby Christian cannot say it to you. They're just going to say, let's go pray. Shut up, and quote scriptures and quote scriptures and quote scriptures and throw saliva at each other's face and go back home. Nothing is gonna happen. And everybody and, and everybody will be battling with addiction. They're not gonna say it. <laughs> yeah. And the devil knows how to rubbish your your zeal. Eh? It is that you're gonna be preaching, and the same thing you're preaching, you'll be suffering from it in silence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be preaching holiness and then you'll be battling with sexual immorality. Yeah. You, then it makes you an hypocrite. It's terrible stuff. You must decide to grow up. So, therefore, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is needed in the life of a believer from birth. Okay, from birth. But you see that after birth care, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is administered to the believer through the hands of a capable shepherd. So Holy Ghost to you as a newborn believer and a newborn Christian will be your pastor. It will, it will, it will, it will, be like, it will wear your pastor like a glove. Do you understand this? So your pastor will preach you, preach to you, encourage you, charge you, tell you, stop doing that, do this. The pastor will almost look like a nanny. But the essence of that is so that you grow, so that the more you grow, you get wind over to the world. One of the arrogant things that happens to people is they feel like, oh, I've received the Holy Spirit, so I can do The Holy Spirit is teaching me, is leading me. It's a lie. You don't, you don't have the stature to be led. Because the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The problem is, you ask yourself, if that leading is easy, huh? look at Christians around you. Does it look like they are being led? Does their life look like a life? Because if the quality of the life that you see among Christians is the quality that is obtained by being led by the Holy Spirit, then, this, then we have to question the kingdom of God. Isn't it? We have to question this born again thing. But I, but I make bold to tell you 
The reason why most Christians, their life is not encouraging and, and inviting and, 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 and cool and, 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 and enterprising is because they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. They are being led by their own belly, by their appetite, by their, by their unsubmitted will. That is what is leading them, not the Holy Ghost. And why do these things happen? Because of wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. The pastor can't take responsibility, so he tells you as a three-month-old baby, feed yourself, change your pampas. Mm. He, he tells you all the things to do. He says, it's good to clean your pampas. Well, you can tell a three-month-old it's good to clean her, his pampas, but can she do it? Mm. Oh. You can tell a two-month-old it's good to eat your food. Can she do it for herself? Can she prepare her food? Can that baby prepare her food? No. Babies are burdened in the beginning. Yeah. So also, uh, young believers are burdened to, to, to the ones that have the responsibility to look after them. But most people don't want to carry the burden. They just want to carry the glory. They want to carry the, the accolades. They don't want to get their hands dirty and do the work. Because as a pastor of born again Christians, you will pray for 50. If there are 50 of them, you will be praying for 50. You fast for 50. Do you understand this? You will, you will, be, you will do your obedience for 50. Because it is on the strength of your obedience that you will capture food to feed them. Capture revelation to give them. Receive strength to fight demons of them. Just like the shepherd will chase wolves away from the sheep. Huh? In the beginning, you are the one chasing demons away from the newborn, from the young born again Christians. Chasing, born, chasing, silencing the whispers of the devil. The work is, the work is enormous, I'm telling you. It is not a joke thing to be a pastor. But of course, in the time and day that we're living in, people don't do the work. They just want the name and the fame and the accolades. The intention is you are looked after well by a shepherd and the shepherds are that the ones that do their job, they are well paid, oh my God. The reason why there is no glory with shepherding is because they are not doing their work so you are not seeing the pay, the life, eh? that is, that is, the life that is lived under the influence of the pay of heaven. We don't see it. What we see are manipulated riches and wealth by pastors that is why when you hear pastor, that the first thing that comes to the mind of an average person is a thief. When you hear church, oh, that place where they just swing the people out of their money. Mm -hmm. When people begin, when shepherds, true shepherds, begin to shepherd God's people, according to the patterns prescribed by God, they will begin to see God begin to dispatch resources from heaven. And then when these shepherds live inside these resources, then shepherding will be attractive again. Yeah, serving God in the capacity of being a shepherd will be attractive again. And then some of the some of the reproach will be erased by the by the ones who have who have operated counterfeit shepherdhood will begin to see true shepherding. The intention of God is that you begin to grow momentum and begin to grow stature by being fed by a good shepherd, a good pastor, a good carer. That is laboring over your soul, teaching you the word of God, helping you to mature, helping you to grow to a point where you begin to hear and know the voice of the Holy Spirit by yourself. It is a, it is a gradual process. It is a gradual process. It is a gradual process. It doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen in a week. So don't be too quick to go hear the Holy Spirit yourself. Grow your senses. You would eventually hear him. You have a whole, almost a whole lifetime to hear him. But make sure you are trained to know his voice before you start hearing demons and you think you're hearing the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says even the angels of darkness can, can appear as the angel of light. So also, you can hear a, the voice of a demon and it will sound like the voice of God. In fact, you can hear the voice of your flesh. You know you can answer your own prayers. Yes. Oh. Come on, you can pray and you can pray for an insight and you will give yourself the insight. The majority, I'm reading from my note now, the majority of the work in babies of the spirit is done through teachers. 
And as the believer, child grows, huh, matures through training, they are weaned over to the spirit. So no pastor should want to be pastor, pastor, and be babying you forever. Now that becomes manipulation. Mm. And that becomes foolishness. It means the pastor doesn't even know, he doesn't even understand the job that is cut out for him. Yeah. He doesn't know when to rejoice in the fruit of his labor. He wants to be a laborer forever. <laughs> Just like when a baby grows up, they grow through process. So they start from being fed, so I write in my notes, being fed. Huh? Now a time comes they can eat independently, meaning you can put the food in the bottle and give it to the baby, and baby can hold it up mm. and drink it. Huh? Or you can put a spoon in their hand and they can scoop food by themselves. Huh? In the beginning, you put the bottle, you hold it in, in your hand, feed them. If it is food, you, you use the spoon, okay, you feed them. They just open their mouth and close it. That's all they do. Open mouth, close it. They grow to, they can now spoon feed themselves, but they can't make the food. They can't go to the kitchen, they can't put it together. They just You just have to bring it, put it in front of them, and they now understand the motion of the spoon or holding feeding bottle. And then they proceed from there. Now they can organize basic food. So you can show baby Harry where, you, where the apples are kept. You see, and, and, and the baby Harry knows that's where my apple is kept. So he can go pick the apple. They can, they can make out basic food. They can pick basic things that you have placed at places. These are growth. These things have similitudes in the spirit. And then they can grow from there. Now they can undo complex preparation, meaning then they can become like a teenager. Now they can go into the kitchen, get the salt, get the indomie, get this, put it together, actually make a meal and come sit down and eat it. That is another level of competence. But you don't, a baby, you, you can't just grow, you can't just jump from a baby to, to, if you find your baby in the kitchen one day, staring rice. <laughs> Oh, you know you're in trouble. You know, you know your ancestors, they found your postcode. They found your postcode. They have paid you a visit. That's for your child. Imagine you find a six month, huh? you put your baby on the, on, the, on the Moses basket. You know the Moses basket? Huh? You put your baby on the Moses basket or the walker and you went to, to the room to pick up uh, something. Huh? And then by the time you come back, huh? your baby is, is multitasking. It's playing some worship songs. <laughs> It's chopping onions. It's chopping onions. Do you understand this? And see, a knife is so useful. Imagine as an adult and you don't have a knife in your house. It's like headache. When you want to cut, you think, oh my God, we need a knife. We need a knife. But you see, as useful and as productive as a knife is, you keep it out of the reach of children. You move it far away. You hide it. Hide it everywhere. Why? It is dangerous to them. Yet, it is a very productive utensil in the house. Yeah, there are certain anointings God will keep you far from you. It is equivalent to a knife to your unmatured baby Christian stature. Mm. Do you understand this? So, certain things you're praying for huh, will never happen if you don't apply yourself to growth. You're asking for knife as a, as a six-month-old. Mm. When you're asking for certain things, certain grace that you're asking for, certain anointing you're asking for, certain, certain level of, of of, of involvement and intervention of the spirit that you're asking for is above your maturity level. So, you will not receive it because God is angry or because God is stingy. You will not receive it because God loves you and he doesn't want to kill you before your time. So, what do I do to be able to receive those things? Do I need to just pray more? No! Oh, I need to just ask God more. Shout louder. Cry. Add cry to it. You can't emotionally blackmail God. Just grow. Just grow. When you go into the supermarket as a 16-year-old and you want to buy a knife, they will check, they will do ID check and they'll tell you, sorry, we can't sell this to you. There are certain dispatchment centers you turn up in the spirit and you say, give me! They say, no. No. Even in the military, not all of them are snipers. Do you understand this? Yeah. So they don't assign you a sniper rifle as just a, a foot soldier. No. And you don't have as many snipers. So you say, ah, I just like the way snipers take people out. Give me, give me the rifle, give me the rifle. They say, no, no. Have you been, and, and, can you ever shoot a rifle, a sniper rifle? Yeah, what do you need to do? Get trained. 
even in your workplace, you want to move along the ranks and you just go for training. They recommend you for training. They send you for training. You go for the training, you return. Now you can handle that responsibility. Now you can receive the pay that comes along with that rank that you have now attained onto by training. It is the same thing in the spirit. And the person training you cannot have the same competence level as you. Can you see the problem? Now? It has to be someone who knows better than you, more competent, more knowledgeable, more experienced, so that they can answer all your questions. And they can, they can, they can help you gain mastery. This is the reason why God gave the fivefold ministry. It's not for bullying. It is to help everybody. And if the fivefold ministry remain the only ones that are the five, and they don't grow more people, they will die with work. And the whole body will be weak together. So, let me show you one scripture and then we're going to close. Because there's no long story with this scripture. It will just interpret everything I've said to you. Let's look at Jesus when he was a child. Luke chapter number 1, quickly. We'll look at this in the life of John, and then we're going to look at it in the life of Jesus. Quickly, 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 quickly. Luke chapter one. number 1. I want you to read verse number 80. Luke chapter number 1, verse 80. Okay? So you know John the Baptist. Okay? He was born a child of prophecy. The angel of the Lord appeared to the mother, just like the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary. Give them a word. You would have a child. This will be his destiny. Okay? So when you were born again, so you were born with a spiritual destiny. Okay? Born of the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. That is not the end. What next? Maturity. Huh? The proof of that is this. What did John do until he entered his ministry and began to preach and began to baptize and began to tell people someone is coming after me? What did he do until that time? Luke chapter number 1 verse 80. Read. John grew up. John grew up. John grew up. Uh -huh. And became strong in spirit. Because the assignment given to John uh, is the kind that suffers strong hostility from strong spirits. Do you understand this? The destiny given to John to prosecute is a destiny that is set to be resisted by strong, hostile spirits. So it was requisite for John to grow up. So you see, the problem is he didn't grow up to receive destiny. He already has the destiny. In fact, it was announced before he was born. Yeah. Do you understand this? So you don't need to pray like, who, who was it that was asking, how do I know my vision? Paul. Huh? It was Paul. You don't need to pray to find your vision. You need to grow into the vision. Huh? As you are growing, listen to me. You don't try to find your vision. Your vision is screaming at you every day. If, if, you, if you just tune to this frequency of the spirit, you will hear your vision every day of your life. It is screaming at you. The more you grow, you get more clarity, but at least you will know what exactly God wants you to do. The John grew up and became strong in the spirit and uh -huh. he lived in the wilderness for how long? Until. Until. Till. So, how long must I grow? Until. How long is my growth process? Until. Until he began his public ministry. So, wilderness is a secluded place. Mm. Eh? Wilderness is not city center. <laughs> wilderness is an isolated place. It is a place where people don't see you and they are complaining, we don't see you anymore. Mm. We don't even see you around. Where have you been? Ah, if, you don't, if people don't ask you where have you been at the time of your appearing, you, you, you appear before your time. Mm. Yeah. There must be that disappearance period. You just vanish from the landscape. To go find God and go find His strength. I would say, seek the Lord and His strength. It is one thing to seek the Lord. It is another thing to seek His strength. The boy grew up. How? What was he doing? What, was, what constitu constituted the growth? Exercise. Exercise with the word. Practicing faith. Practicing dependency. Practicing trusting God for food daily. Huh? He lived in the wilderness. Practicing trusting God to protect him from wild animals. Do you understand this? He goes to bed in the night. He doesn't know if a lion is going to walk past. He doesn't know if a cheetah or an hyena huh? is just crouching next to him. Next to him. He sleeps every night. 
Expect him to wake up the next morning because the Lord will have kept him. Practicing. Exercising his spiritual senses. Until, he did this until he began his public ministry to Israel. The appointed recipient of his ministry. To Israel. Jump now to chapter number 2. Chapter number 2. Read verse number... Read verse number 40. Start from verse number 39. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements... When his parents Lord, had fulfilled all the requirements of the law, uh -huh. they returned home to uh -huh. Nazareth in Galilee. Uh -huh. There, the child grew up healthy. There! Don't, don't rush it. There, the child grew up. Oh, can you see that Jesus didn't receive a different pattern from John? Mm -hmm. So, that's why I said, the race color for all of us is the same. If you skip this growing up until process, you would just have a basic neutralized destiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will remain a dream. You forever live in the potential. What God can do. What God can do. What God can do. You will never. You will never reach a place where you say what God has done. What God has done. The annoying thing is people will see the potential in you. Yeah, potentials are very, very. You know, it's it, it, it's like it's like trailer. Uh huh. Potential are like trailer. Have you ever seen the trailer of a movie? Yeah. It's so cool, but it's not the movie. <laughs> uh, it's like. The, 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 the best part of the movie just cut into short period of time and it's ah, supposed to wet your appetite and say, oh my god, this movie is going to be lit. We need to see. We need to see. So many of you, your life is like that. Everybody see you. They are always excited but there is nothing. There is the, 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 the fullness is denied. Do you understand this? You are an exciting sight. See, ah, this guy, potential, you never become it. Potential is terrible. And potential is the proof that there is a movie. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a proof that there is a movie that is interesting. It's just that until we see the movie, we have not seen the movie. The trailer does not equal. You can't see a trailer and say, I've seen I've seen Avengers. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Yeah, I just saw the trailer. And then I saw the guy just go, ish, ish. Yeah, the movie is interesting. You, they, they will just know this guy is crazy. Something is wrong with this guy. Don't live inside potential. Actualize your potential. In order for Jesus to become that savior that you know, eh? that healer that you read or were preached, that was preached to you, that deliverer, the one who raised the dead, healed the sick, cleansed the leper, suffered for you, died, resurrected, and, and, and he, this is what happened to him. Eh? And it's the same thing expected of you. It is that there the child grew. Uh huh. He grew up healthy and strong. strong. Can you see? So how do you become? How do you become strong physically? You exercise, go to the gym, lift heavy weights, put pressure on yourself, and increase the weight, increase the strength, increase your endurance, increase your tenacity, increase. There, the child grew. Healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom. Huh? What is wisdom? It is the right use of spiritual senses to, dif to know the difference between right and wrong. To know the difference between what God wants and what God doesn't want. Huh? It means he was filled with skill. Remember I taught when I was teaching about wisdom, it is God's craftsmanship. It is God's genius. The ability to come with ingenuine solutions that are tailor-made and original in all its way for a particular problem. And there is no end to how frequent it can manufacture solutions. This is God's engineering, spirit engineering, God's ingenuity. This is wisdom. And Jesus, he worked strong in the spirit. He grew strong. He was filled with wisdom. Mm -hmm. And God's favor was upon him. And that God's favor is God's approval. To say, ah, oh, I like this one. This one would it would be beneficial to our company. Have you ever seen a, an employee that is very good at their job? The favor of the company will be upon them. They will give them special treatment. Yeah, if there is an employee that is very resourceful to the boss, you will see the boss will give them, and you are just some annoying, you know, those 
Staff are just annoyed. Have you ever been a manager before? Pastor, you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You manage people, you have some, some staff that you're managing, and you, you almost bless God for them. And you say, thank God for this guy. They make your life easy. They understand you quickly. Yeah. You don't have to waste all your saliva to, to just give them an instruction. They are very intuitive. They are very helping. They make suggestions. They, they are willing to just go extra mile. They understand the need of the business, and they are willing to just do it. They enjoy their job, and they enjoy just making life easy for you. Yeah. Yeah. And they love serving you. Then you will have some, you just know this one is just, he just wants to work for his money. He has no passion, no commitment, no, no, no. They, 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 even if you can't fire them, you just don't like this person. You're just thinking, look, just get out of my face. Do you understand this? But you see that one that, that, that makes your heart smile, you, you have, you look favorably on them. So imagine that other one who is so annoying, doesn't do his job well, just about does the bare minimum and stuff. And, and they won't start lobbying for some special favors and some, some holidays. So they said, no. Get out of work, my friend. No. But you see, the one who, 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 who is resourceful and good at their job and just nice and happy and you, you bend over backwards. You, if they need help, you, you quickly you say, no, no, no. They're saying thank you. You say, no, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you. You deserve it. The Bible says, God does not forget your labor of love. And God owes no man nothing. If you do something that contributes to the pro progress of the implementation of God's will upon the earth, God will not owe you your reward. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. And how do you get that reward? Find out what he wants. Help him to give you the art and the attitude to joyfully serve him. Ooh, he will lavish you with reward. And the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor, God's special preference, special treatment was upon him. And then last scripture, verse number, let me show you something. It's still in that place and then we're going to now jump to verse number 52 and I'm going to close for tonight. Huh? I want you to start reading from verse number 41. Read now. Every year, uh -huh. Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. That's right. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. When Jesus was 12 years old. I know you people don't pay attention to you. you, you, you I, I, some of you have done Bible study, so you, you've heard it before. But you don't really put premium on that time. You put premium on the time he healed the sick, raised the dead. This was what made that possible. Huh? When he was 12 years old, meaning when he was a boy. And it, was, and it was not a miracle working boy. I hope you know that. No, he's just a basic Jewish boy. But what separated him from other 12 year old was that he was waxing strong intentionally, growing in the spirit. Did you see this? So, the basic things that his parents would do, he makes the most of it. So, they just go frequently every year, routine. Even the children, the parents were not growing in the spirit. Eh? Mm. The, to them, going was routine. Jesus took advantage of it and used it to do some extra curriculum. This is someone who is intentional about his destiny. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. And he will not take chances to just say, I'm a Jew. Well, God saw many Jews. They attended the festival as usual. That's number 43. Uh -huh. After the celebration was over, uh -huh. they started home to Nazareth. Uh -huh. But Jesus stayed behind. But Jesus stayed behind huh? those who will grow are those who live extra time yeah, yeah when everybody has finished praying you pray some more huh? when everybody has done the basic requirement fasting huh? you in your secret play time you add few more days did you see this you add more thoughtfulness to the things of god you think about god more intentionally you practice obedience more. When people pat themselves on the back, at least I obey few things today. No, you you obey more. You don't you don't glory in those little mediocre compliments. They say at least a day. Normally I tell like twenty lies a day. Today I told nineteen. It's improvement, really. 
No, 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 no. You are that one that always want to do more. Seeking to do more. Seeking to do more. Understanding the urgency of growth in prosecuting your destiny. Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Uh huh. His parents didn't miss him at first. His parents didn't miss him at first. Meaning that it was usual uh, for when they are traveling, Jesus is not always next to them. So he didn't quickly occur to them that something is this guy has, has stayed back. Uh huh. Because they assumed he was among the other travelers. Ah, so Jesus was a people's person. Yeah, it was a people's person. One of the proof that God's favor is upon you is that God will create, He will create cushion for you in the right places. Jesus was a fun child. He was a fun 12 year old. You know, some children are just, you, know, you just, you send them back to their mom. Go, go out there. Not Jesus. Not Jesus. He was fun to be around. So they assumed that He was with other travelers. But when He didn't show up in the evening, can you imagine? So as 12 year old, as you go about your day, ooh, you can be like Jesus. Come on, Silama. They started looking for him among other relatives and friends. You, you will intentionally not do what 12 year olds do. Do you understand this? I wish Lulu was here. You intentionally not do what 12 year olds, 13 year old, 18, 21, 25, 30 year olds. You're not going to do just what people your age do. Can you not see the kind of results they are getting? If you want to be more, you have to do more. If you want to be different, you have to do different. When they didn't come back, they started looking for him among relatives and friends. Verse number 45, when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. And this will blow your mind what happened here. And people have misconception of this. Huh? Read it. Verse number 46. Three Read. days later. Three days Three days, a 12-year-old was by himself for three days. Do you understand this? The parents had journeyed three days. Oh. They had journeyed three days. Or at least, let's say, even if it's not the journey is not three days, even though maybe they searched for him in the city for first day to be in fine and second day to be in fine. But look, he took three days search. Huh? So meaning for three days they didn't see him. For three days he wasn't with his family. He didn't see his mom. Yeah. He didn't see his dad. And you, you are such a baby. You, you can't even, you can't even. Oh my God! I don't want to go. I don't want to go too because I, I don't want to be too hard today. Three days later, they yeah, finally, finally. How is he eating? <laughs> Where did he sleep? They don't have a family. They didn't go to their family house. They camped. At the, they always come. They camp for the festival. They finish the festival. Everybody goes back. They decamp. Do you understand this? A 12-year-old was by himself in a city. He handled himself for three days. Where he was obviously, whether he ate or not, we don't even know. But we can assume that he didn't eat. Because the Bible didn't say, he, and he stayed in the house of Jonah, son of Drew. No. The Bible just said, the Bible didn't give any clue about his whereabouts. The Bible just said, they couldn't find him. They went back to Jerusalem to search for him. Three days later, they discovered him. Uh, Jesus was discovered. <laughs> <laughs> they discovered him in the temple. What was he doing, Pastor Ivana? Sitting among. The religious teachers. Sitting among teachers. Can you see? If we're looking for you, we should find you around the teacher. That's the only thing that makes sense to you. What was he doing? Listen. Ah, he was hearing them. Listen. He, he, no, no, he was he was just he was just with them. Listen. He was the son of God was listening to them. And asking questions. And asking questions. So what is the proof that you are intentional about your growth? It is that number one, you are always around the teacher. Number two, you are always listening to the teacher. And number three, you are always asking questions that reflects that you are, you are interacting with the knowledge that has been given to you. 
So if you claim to be a born again Christian, I quietly I'm just going to observe you. I will see how frequent you come to the teacher. Remember, Jesus stayed back. Eh? Everybody came for feasting, party. No, no, he didn't come for party, he came for word. Because Jerusalem is just one, it's not everywhere. They didn't live in Jerusalem. So when he came to the Jerusalem, this was the home of the highest scholars. You know, of the time. So he said, I will make use of this time. You guys came for festival, do your festival and go. I will chop three more days of word. In three days, he was around the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. In verse number 47, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. He was full of wisdom. So he exercised his wisdom by dealing with the best in the land. Do you understand this? He sat down. Jesus, at 12 years old, was missing for three days. Huh? It was not a crazy missing. No, he, he was in the temple. And that's why when the parents found him and they were like, Oh, sir, why have you done this to us? We have searched for you all over the place. And Jesus said, But why did you need to search? Almost like to his mother, have you forgotten? You, the, the angel appeared to you. Have you forgotten what the angel said about me? Shouldn't here be where you start your search? Not where you end your search or stumble into me after three days. This is, this was where you ought to have started your search if you understood my destiny. And if I get missing for five minutes, you, 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 you think of the temple before you think about maybe he's, he's in a neighbor's house. Why did you need to search? He asked, did you not know I must be in my father's house? Another translation will say, I must be about my father's business. Yeah. Huh? So you see, the business cut out for you as a born again Christian, as a young Christian, young in the faith, not so skillful with the word of God. The only thing, the only business you have doing is hanging around teachers. Listening to the teachers, asking the teachers questions. This is what culminates growth. Do you understand this? So Jesus didn't just show up at the pool of Jordan, baptized, and heaven opened and said, This is my son, you know my well, please, because he's Jesus. No, heaven have no respect for the fact that he's Jesus. They have respect for can we find a man drained? Can we find a man who through all of his life has labored in listening to teaching? Waxing strong in exercising his faith and exercising his spirituality that has gained stature on the strength of training. This was the man that the heavens sought for. When they looked in the pool and the father saw him, he said, this one has stature. He has, he has a rich CV. This one has competence. Put upon him government. Give him royal responsibilities and give him royal favor and attention. Put the resources of the whole kingdom at his disposal because he is competent. So you see the reason why some of your prayer prayers will never be answered. It is joke. You're asking for a machine gun when you can't even handle a table knife. God won't answer you, not because he doesn't like you. It is because his love for you uh, and his jealousy to protect you will not make him give it to you because it will be irresponsible of God to give you something that you have no skill for and that thing will kill you instead of enhance your life. Oh Lord, I just want to be able to pray for depressed people and they just cannot be free. Yeah, it is not, it is not just bread for the kids. Do you understand this? It requires a certain level of competence and stature in the spirit to be handed that kind of strong weapon because you're going to be up against strong spirits. You think depression is, you just feel sad. You think, you think depression is just, oh, she's just not happy. She's just not happy for how the, her life is going. No, depression is a strong spirit. He sits upon people and he oppresses them. So, you're not just praying for a depressed person. You are attacking a spirit. Do you understand this? You're coming against the spirit. And the spirit will not leave you without a feedback. Oh, see, after you've prayed for the depressed and oppressed person, and if you, oh my God, I feel better. Thank you so much, sister. And you hug them and you go, the demon is waiting for you at home. Mm. Yeah. The demon says, oh, it's fine. You, you embarrass me here. No problem. No problem. We'll meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the demon will not come alone. 
Yeah, he would go find some of his friends, find some of his mates and say, look, find stronger demons and say, I was embarrassed today. I was embarrassed today. And I need to gain my honor back. So you see, it is not a strong Christian. It isn't that God doesn't want to make you a strong man. It is will you pay the price to train your spirit, to receive the stature and the approval in the spirit to be able to handle such responsibility for God without hurting yourself, without destroying people's life, and without bringing shame to the kingdom. So if you wonder what happened, I close my Bible here. If you wonder what happened to Jesus until he showed up at Jordan, just like what happened to Jordan, until he started public ministry, what happened to Jesus until training, listening, practice, exercising himself onto spiritual growth, through training, becoming strong, waxing strong in the spirit, prayer, fasting. 12 year old was missing for three days. His parents didn't seem, you understand? He didn't receive any mommy care, daddy care for three days. He didn't care if he won't find food. He was in the temple for three days. A 12 year old that doesn't care about food have you found in your generation? You know how old you are and you can't even skip a meal. You say, no, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna try gradually. Really? Really? Jesus, the Son of God, he was not spared of this rigorous training. You won't be spared. You won't be spared. But can I encourage you? There is a glorious destiny where you supply yourself to this kind of training. Ooh, there is a beautiful life awaiting you. There is a glorious display of the power and the magnificence of God's strength when you accept this pressure, accept this training, submit yourself to this routine and come out like Jesus with a testimony from heaven. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. God gives the world the charge to hear you out. And what more? He confirms what you say with signs and wonder. Proving that this one has spoken well. He represents the intentions of the kingdom. Your life will not lack results. And then it's only there that you can put demons in check. Do you understand this? You can put demons in check. I love that. Jen, you want this. Come get it. Insist on spiritual growth. Listen to teachers. Spiritual teachers. Listen. Not hear. I didn't say hear them. I said listen to them. Huh? To hear them is to just hear their word as information and say, yeah, I'll see what I can do with that. No. To listen is to take those words as instructions. It instructs you to go do something. So when you hear a teacher say, pray. Huh? It is not an opinion. It is not, it is not, it is not a suggestion. It is order, instruction. You go pray. And you ask a lot of questions. You ask a lot of questions. You ask a lot of questions. And you don't know that as you do these things, you are waxing strong in the spirit. You are becoming hard to deceive. Yeah. You become, it becomes hard for you to be deceived. It becomes easy to spot the lie of the devil. Once his planning is given, you can spot him out from afar. In slow motion. Do you see this? Growth. When you grow spiritually, he puts the devil in slow motion. When he's pulling out of the corner, you already spot him and say, hey, 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 I see you. I see you. Back off. Stop it now. Stop that nonsense now. Yeah. All of a sudden, your mood is changing. You don't know why. You're just feeling bad. Before you start lashing out at people, you, you already know that, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, this is not normal. And then you go into your closet, brakos kappa, you enter in. You understand? If it happens to you at work, get up from your desk, go into the toilet, and take two minutes, kapos kappa, you the and pray the Holy Ghost and pray that nonsense out of you. Before you say nonsense again and you, and you, and you now feel sad, like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I, I, I'm, I'm an embarrassment. I shouldn't have done that. That doesn't look Christian. -y. The next thing, now you are now you are ashamed to tell people you are a Christian because they saw how you behaved the other day. You acted like an unbeliever. So the next time they're talking Christian, you pocket your Christianity now because you know you have you have you have you have messed up the church. When you feel your mood just changing, you're feeling a certain kind of way, you're feeling, you're feeling, you're feeling just angry. I said, why am I? Why why are things, why are things slow? You, you, you begin to sing praise songs. You begin to worship. 
and then you feel that heaviness lift away from you. As you do this, as you make a practice of this, you're waxing strong in the spirit. One day you will be able to help people with the same problem. I hope I've been able to help you again more tonight. Listen to teachings like this. Listen again. Don't listen once and assume that you heard everything. No, don't do that to yourself. Listen again. Play it again. Listen again. And then ask questions. You know, I heard in that teaching, the title, it said this. Can you please explain that to me some more? Oh, I experienced this today. Is it an example of that word? This is how to know you're growing. You begin to compare what the word says with things that happen to you on a daily basis. Something happened to me today. Is it, is it what it means by 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 verse 13? And then we'll now, you now check it. This is how, this is what it means to intentionally, you're putting your life on the scale of the word of God. You don't take chances. This is how to increase in skill and grow. When you pay this price of this level of diligence, God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Your life will be beautiful. And you can start today. You don't need eternity. The Lord is with you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That the Holy Spirit breathes on you. That breath that brings understanding. That breath that opens your mind and opens your heart to understand the scripture. Receive an injection of strength. That strength that makes you push more. Do more. Press more. To become more. Receive a new, a new depth of hunger for the word of God. And receive that passion to see to the details of the expectation of God for your destiny. In the name of Jesus, receive stamina, receive stability. May you be established in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace to supply yourself to the school of growth. So that you can come out with the testimony of the approval of God. And the seal of authority. And the accompanying resources needed. To put the glory of your inheritance on display. So that Jesus becomes attractive because of how his life is finding expression through your vessel. In Jesus' most precious name I have prayed. Amen, amen and amen and amen. I love you guys so much. I hope you've been blessed. Um, again, teachings like tonight is a manual. It's not just a preaching. It is a manual. It will stand the test of time. I love you guys so much. I will see you on Sunday as we press forward on this campaign. The Lord is with you. Enjoy your weekend. Have a blessed weekend. If you have questions, please shoot your questions into the DMs and, 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 and get busy. The Lord bless you. I love you guys. I'll see you on Sunday. Have a delightful weekend ahead. God bless you. God bless you, Jen. God bless you, Paul. God bless you, Donna, Mr. Fola, everyone else that listen. God bless you. I love you.